Chairman, and thanks for the invitation. Um, my talk today is going to be about the uh, concept of inflammatory back pain and, and early referral. Um, so the object these are the objectives of my talk for today. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about the, I'm, I'm pretty sure you know about the spondyloarthritis concept uh, where we do have a, a group of rheumatoid, uh, rheumatic disorders that share several um, uh, common factors including basically the sacroiliitis and the spondylitis as you know. Uh, and there's also the element of enthesitis which is the inflammation at the insertion of tendon ligament capsule to the bone and the association with HLA-B27 as a genetic marker. And these dis disorders, they, they do have seronegativity for rheumatoid factor, and they do have also uveitis as an extra articular manifestations. So these are the different uh, spondyloarthritis, as you can see it there. Uh, this kind of concept is really changing now. When we think about a syndrome with constellation of uh, clinical features, uh, symptoms and signs that uh, define a specific uh, disorder, for example, enclosing spondylitis or psoriatic arthritis, now we are trying to look into these disorders as a clinical presentation. So we do have some uh, uh, you know, diseases which present as an ax axial involvement or peripheral articular involvement, uh, but we do see, see certainly some overlap uh, where you can have a disease which uh, have peripheral as well as axial involvement. And there are certainly the other features like the enthesitis and the dactylitis, which is the sausage uh, uh, digit type uh, uh, inflammation. So uh, here, for example, the, uh, the axial spondyloarthritis and the peripheral spondyloarthritis, but you can have certainly an overlap uh, of these diseases where you can have the spine as well as the peripheral joints involved at the same time. There is definitely a delay in the diagnosis of a spondyloarthritis, and you should know about this because really the early, the early, the early referral is very important actually for uh, treating those, uh, uh, those patients um, as you can prevent the structural damage and deterioration uh, if you really treat them early. Uh, if you look into the studies, uh, there is an average diagnosis delay of about 8 to 11 uh, years uh, worldwide. Here, there is a study actually done by Dr. Amer in Riyadh, uh, and uh, we have a, a delay of up to se 6 years uh, uh, before those patients are diagnosed as uh, spondyloarthritis. Um, I think it's really important to know the difference between inflammatory versus mechanical back pain. And of course, uh, the, the pain and the stiffness um, is more uh, seen in the sitting of uh, the inflammatory back pain. The stiffness is more than 30 minutes, and, uh, 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 which is not the case in the mechanical back pain. Usually it's a short uh, lift stiffness. Uh, the, the activity improves the symptoms in inflammatory back pain while it worsens it in the setting of mechanical back pain. Um, the age at onset is really important because most of the spondyloarthritis these are affecting younger populations. So you will see patients who are below the age of 40 uh, most of the time, which is not the case in the mechanical back pain. You might see really uh, older patients in that setting. And of course, the radiographic findings of uh, sacroiliitis and syndesmal uh, fight formations is something that is characteristic for spondyloarthritis, which is different from what you see in, in, in degenerative um, uh, spine disease. This is a tool for recognizing the inflammatory back pain uh, developed by ASSAS, which is assessment uh, for uh, uh, you know, um, uh, spondyloarthritis group uh, or society. And, and, and it's likened to the iPhone. So this is an eye bane, which makes it really easy to recognize the inflammatory by bane by this uh, acronym. Uh, in patients with chronic back pain who are having it more than three months, uh, the inflammatory back pain criteria are fulfilled if at least four out of those five parameters are present. So I stand for insidious onset, uh, P for pain at night, and A for age at onset less than 40 years of age, or probably even 45. Improvement, I, improvement with exercise, and N, no improvement with rest. These are really important. If you have four out of these, uh, this is an inflammatory back pain. However, you have to recognize the limitations of uh, such a definition because 80% uh, of those patients with axial spondyloarthritis, they have definitely inflammatory back pain. However, 20% of them, they do not. And uh, some patients who are having mechanical back pain, uh, they do have an inflammatory back pain as, as a, a presentation in 20% of them. So the, this implies that the presence of inflammatory back pain alone can never be sufficient to make a diagnosis of axial spondyloarthritis, but uh, has always to be combined with other clinical laboratory and imaging parameters characteristic for uh, spondyloarthritis. 
And here, for example, the characteristic parameters that you should be looking for to aid you in the diagnosis of such diseases. For example, the symptoms, you have this inflammatory back pain, as we have mentioned, and also the arthritis, which is usually asymmetric, involving larger joints. And of course, the enthesitis, as you can see here, with the achillus tendon and the uveitis and extra articular manifestations. Imaging, you can see basically sacroiliitis, but that can be delayed for years if you depend on it. The MRI is more uh, sensitive and specific as well. Uh, so you do see basically the uh, bone marrow edema that's characteristic for uh, sacroiliitis. Um, Two-thirds of the patient may have an acute phase reactant elevation like ESR and CRB, and the patient, they do have good response to the insight, which is characteristic for inflammatory back pain, and uh, it's not seen actually uh, with the mechanical type uh, pain. Uh, also, genetics, HLA-B27 positivity is seen in those patients. And of course, there are some other predisposing concomitant diseases like the presence of psoriasis or Crohn's disease or preceding infections, uh, subjecting, for example, gastroenteritis or urethritis that can precede uh, the development of spondyloarthritis. Of course, there are extra articular manifestations uh, involving, for example, the eye with the uveitis, skin, for example, the psoriasis, and of course, the osteopor osteoporosis, osteopenia, and also the peripheral arthritis. There are some others as well. Now, why is early diagnosis of unclosing spondylitis important? A delay, we know that there is a delay, as we have already mentioned earlier. 81% of the AS patients will lose a spinal mobility in the first 10 years of the disease, and unnecessary and or ineffective medical procedures may occur during this, this delay period. And, and there are potential to prevent the damage if treatment is initiated early. We do have now effective treatment that can prevent uh, radiographic uh, damage in these joints. Uh, improved diagnostic tools like the MRI, for example, and advances in the genetic screening make early diagnosis more reliable. So um, now we do have, as we have already mentioned, new effective treatments. So you can see, for example, here the structural damage on the vertical axis and here are the years and you can see the natural, hearse, uh, natural course of the disease if left untreated. There will be uh, you know, progressive damage in the, in the spine and if you do basically catch the patients earlier, the better because you can prevent this kind of progression. And uh, so it's really important to recognize these cases early. Now the possible uh, screening approach for axial spondylar arthritis among patients with chronic low back pain in those patients who, have, who are having chronic back pain for more than three months and their first symptoms develop before the age of 40 or 45 years of age, then the presence of inflammatory back pain or the presence of sacroiliitis um, uh, on imaging, on any imaging, whether it is the uh, ordinary x-ray or the MRI, or the presence of HLA-B27 will suggest that such a patient should be referred to a rheumatologist. And the reason, as we have already mentioned, that we need to, to pick up and diagnose these cases early so that we can effectively treat them. Now, if you look into the assess referral recommendations, and this is really important. I think if you would like to concentrate on something, this is the slide that is really important for you to concentrate on. So the assess referral recommendations, patients with chronic back pain duration more than three months, equal or three months, with back pain onset before the age of 45, as we have mentioned, should be referred to a rheumatologist if one or more of the following parameters is present. First, the inflammatory back pain, as we have already mentioned, which is characterized by the IBAIN acronym. And then the HLA-B27 uh, positivity is also helpful in such conditions. Sacroiliitis on the imaging, whether it's an X-ray or MRI. And peripheral manifestations, in particular, like the arthritis, the enthesitis, and the dactylitis. The dactylitis is swelling of the whole digit. We call it uh, basically dactylitis. Uh, sausage-like uh, type uh, of uh, swelling. Uh, ex presence of extra-articular manifestations like the psoriasis or inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or uveitis. And uh, the family history of spondyloarthritis uh, uh, is also important. Good response to NSAIDs because this is really distinguishes inflammatory from mechanical back pain and elevated acute phase, uh, acute phase reactants. So these are the features that will basically stimulate you to refer these patients to a rheumatologist. So in summary, um, axial arthritis patients can and should be diagnosed much earlier. There are remarkably available effective treatments and the response is better in the earlier stages of the disease. Now we have really biologic therapies including the anti-TNFs and also, for example, interleukin-17 inhibitors. My colleague is going to talk about it later on. And, uh, of course, the orthopedists and the spinal surgeons should refer patients with chronic low back pain duration more than three months. 
and onset of the back pain before the age of 45, and if at least one of the following screening parameters are present, like inflammatory back pain, the HLA-B27 positivity, and also the sacroiliitis on any imaging. With this, I end my, my talk. Thanks a lot for you, and uh, I appreciate it.